This chapter will introduce you to the various levels of software used in your IBM personal computer. You won't have to work with all the information presented in this chapter every day, but as you progress with your new computer experience and as you read new computer magazines and news articles, you'll find that knowing about the levels of software will help you understand your own system better. It will also help you to understand your IBM's operating system, DOS. That makes your computer one of the most powerful personal computers ever designed. You've heard the word program used extensively when talking about computers. A program is a pre-written set of instructions that tells your computer to perform a specific task. That task may be as simple as telling the disk drive to start running or as complex as allowing you to do a five-year financial projection for your company. A program is a set of instructions written in a language that your computer understands. Programs are generally referred to as software. Generally, software can be divided into two categories, application software and operating system software. Application software means applying a program to do a specific function or task or to solve a specific problem. Application software could be used for inventory control or financial projections for a company. Most of the pre-programmed commercially available software packages, as well as programs you may generate to do a particular task you need done, fall into the category of application software. We'll deal with application software in further detail in Chapter 8. Operating system software is a more internal kind of software. An operating system is essentially a way for your computer to know how to get information from the keyboard, send it to the screen, and to manage the various other devices connected to your computer. Many people think of the operating system as a traffic cop, directing the flow of traffic from many different directions into many other directions. The operating system you are using, DOS, stands for Disk Operating System. Some other operating systems available for other computers are SOS, which stands for Sophisticated Operating System, and CPM, which stands for Control Program for Microprocessors, and there are others. CPM is a very popular operating system that has many application programs written for it. You can add the CPM operating system to your IBM computer. If you do, you would then be able to run any programs written to run on CPM, as well as programs written for DOS. However, whether you are running DOS or CPM, they are both operating systems. The operating system allows you to work with application software and frees you from worrying about the hardware. Software or programs are written in various levels of language, depending on how and where they're used within your computer. Languages are the electronic words that programs use to run. The highest level languages are those that you interact with directly. In fact, these languages use words or instructions that are very much like English commands. Some words you have already used to command your computer are run, load, and save. You ran the music program. You loaded and saved in the copy program. These words are examples of high-level language words. BASIC and PASCAL are two of the high-level languages available for your computer. BASIC stands for Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code, while Pascal is named after a French inventor and philosopher of the 17th century, Blaise Pascal, who invented a mechanical calculator when he was 18. Other languages used in computers today include FORTRAN, which stands for Formula Translator, COBOL, which stands for Common Business Oriented Language, Fourth, Logo, and Pilot are other languages available for some computer systems today. Each language was designed for a different purpose and each has its own particular characteristics. There are more high-level languages, but at the other end of the scale, down at the electronic component level, your computer responds only to a series of on and off pulses to do its job. When you type in high-level language words, those words must be read by smaller programs called interpreters. These interpreters translate them into what's called machine and assembly language. It is in the machine and assembly language level where the work is done. Therefore, your computer start disks need an interpreter program to translate the high-level language that you work with into the low-level language that the individual computer components work with. 
An interpretive program deals directly with language. It might be helpful to think about the relationship between the operating system, interpreters, and the language systems this way. You and your friend are in a new country, and your friend wants to get to a place some distance away. You hail a cab. You are the application software. You have the necessary information on how to get from one part of the city to another, calling a cab. But you can't speak the local language. The cab driver is the operating system software. You ask an interpreter to tell a cab driver where your friend wants to go. But you don't have to tell a driver how to get there. His knowledge of the area and his ability to drive the cab is the operating system. The language you speak to tell the interpreter where you want to go is the high-level language software. The translation that the interpreter does is the interpreter program. Your cab driver, the operating system, puts his foot on the gas pedal. The movement of the gas pedal is the assembly language. That tells the engine that it's time to go faster. The machine language takes over from there to tell the parts of the engine, the crankshaft, and the pistons when to go up and down. Within your computer, machine language is the lowest level of communication. It is at this level that all information and data has been reduced to the on and off pulses that enable your computer to function. These on and off pulses have been formed into a code that represents letters and numbers. Here's how it works. If you were to switch the light switch in your room on, then off, then on, then off again, you would have created a code that could be written like this. In binary coding, you would have expressed the number 10. We won't get into the mathematics involved in binary coding in this program because you won't need to work directly with machine or assembly language to use your IBM personal computer efficiently. However, you might want to know what the 64K or 128K or 256K stands for when it's used to describe the amount of memory in your computer. If so, here's a brief explanation. Early computer programmers decided to assign a number to every letter in the alphabet as well as to certain symbols. And since binary coding reduces every number to a series of on and off pulses, these letters and symbols can now be expressed as a series of on and off pulses. Each individual pulse is called a bit, a positive, or an on pulse is a bit, and a negative or an off pulse is a bit. A standard code was developed that could express all the letters of the alphabet and some signs and symbols by eight-bit arrangements of on and off pulses. We call these different eight pulse combinations words. They are also called bytes. Eight-bit arrangements are used because they can form 256 different combinations which is more than enough for all the letters, numbers, and symbols. The 8-bit bytes are organized into kilobytes, a thousand bytes. For technical reasons, however, a thousand bytes is really 1,024 bytes. But the computer industry rounds off those extra bytes and refers to multiples of kilobytes in one, two, and three digit numbers. Since we can reduce any number into a code of pulses that consist of either an on or off, positive or negative state, we can use this ability to store these pulses in electronic circuits. There are tens of thousands of tiny storage chambers inside each integrated circuit chip, where simple on and off electrical impulses are stored. Therefore, if your computer has 256K of RAM, it can store approximately 256,000 8-bit words or bytes in active memory, or over 2,048,000 individual on or off pulses. Of course, by storing blocks of bytes on disk and only using active memory for what you are currently working on, you can gain a tremendous amount of usable memory. Each disk that you use with your IBM personal computer can store either 160,000 bytes or 320,000 bytes, depending on whether you have single or double-sided capable disk drives. For a 320K disk, that's about 2,560,000 on and off pulses, which is roughly equal to 106 double-spaced typewritten pages. This chapter should have given you a better understanding of how the various levels of applications and operating system software interact inside of your computer. 
You won't have to be concerned with all of this information every day, but a general understanding of it will help you become more sophisticated in understanding how your computer relates and compares to other systems you may read about or someday want to use. In the next chapter, we'll take a look at the many types of pre-written application software available for your computer.